Bear with me for a moment. Imagine you're in your studio. Your client is ready to go, your camera's ready, connected to your computer. You start taking pictures and you're getting great shots. Your client is actually laughing at your jokes and you're getting great reactions. And then you look over at your computer, nothing is there. Where did the photos go? And it's like that dream when you're on stage, but then you remember you're not wearing any pants, except it's real and it's happening in front of your client. So you dive into your computer, try to figure out as quickly as you can. And even if you get it done in two minutes and go back to your client, you've lost that connection. And now you're starting the session over from scratch and maybe with a little bit less confidence. This is the kind of situation that I hate to happen. And to avoid this, I always prepare my capture one in the same way every time. And it really comes down to how you manage your sessions and how you configure the software. So in the next few videos, I'm going to show you some of the things that I do to try to avoid this. And hopefully after you've seen these, these tips will help you get everything set up so that the only thing you need to worry about is to make sure you don't forget to wear pants. I'm going to talk about creating a template for creating your own sessions. So that starts with creating a new session. And the name of the session doesn't matter because we're actually just going to throw it away at the end. But I do want to customize the capture subfolder because I'm going to be creating subdirectories here and the actual capture, capture directory isn't going to be this folder. So I'm just going to change this to raw files. And I'm also going to change the output folder just because I want to create something a little more descriptive. So I'm going to call this process files. I don't really use selects and, and trash is a, a perfectly good name for that folder. And the capture name doesn't really matter here because that's always set in the name of the session by default. So create the session. So now we have a new session. The first thing I'm going to do is right click on capture folder and open this up in Finder. And we see here we've got, this is the session folders, the process files, the raw files, as we customize that. What I'm gonna do is open up raw files and create several new uh, directories. Call one for tests. This would be for lighting tests and, and uh, just basic shots to get started. And then I'm gonna create several directories for different shots. And these are really just placeholder directories, but they uh, will help us by, by being here, we'll kind of jumpstart things for our session so that they are already ready to go. And I'm just gonna do six because that's enough. To, it's painful enough watching me to do that. So I'm gonna, the key thing here, so these are here in the session folder, so they'll be created, but the main thing is they need to be added to the favorites so that the capture one session knows about these folders. And now that they're here, whatever the session is created from this template, these folders will be in favorites. And what I want to do also here is set this as the capture folder. And that means that when this session is started, if, when you start capturing photos, those shots are going to show up here in shot one. Now they'll also show up here in capture folder because this is sort of a virtual folder and it, whatever the current capture folder is actually what this folder is pointing to. So for example, if I right click on capture folder and say show in finder, it's actually taking me straight to shot one. Now the next thing we need to customize is the capture naming. Now in the camera tab over here is really everything to do with tethering. And this includes the names of the files that are created when we tether. So I'm going to create a new naming uh, uh, format and there's really three things that I really want to have in the name. One is the date. Uh, it's an old habit. I like to keep track of the date in the file names. The second is the name of the session. Uh, so I can find the session where this image comes from if I ever find it, just the image file. And then the third thing is the name of the subject that's in the session. So to start this, we'll add the date. And I use the full date, but I do like year, month, date so that it sorts correctly. And you can just double click that to add it to the format. And then the session name is actually called the document name. I'm just going to start typing that sort of document. And then you can click on that, hit return. And then the name of the folder where you're storing images in can be used to name the file as well. So that's called the destination folder name, which shows up right there if you start typing destination. And I'll hit return. And finally, we'll go this one, the one digit counter. We're going to right click on that or just click on the arrow and select three digits. And then we can actually drag that up there. So now we've got the date, the session name, the destination folder name, and a counter. Just click OK. We actually see a sample of the name here. The date, this is the untitled session, which is the current name of this session in shot one. So when we recreate a new session, 
from this template, then that name will be showing up here. Um, and then going back to the library tab, I also want to customize the albums that are created here. Now these are smart albums. If we right click and choose edit smart album on five stars, we see this is set to be a rating of five stars. I don't use uh, stars in my sessions, so I'm just going to delete the five stars. I don't need that, but I do use color ratings. I use the red and green color ratings while I'm shooting to either selected file with the green. So that's a file that I think is, is worthy of looking at later on to show the clients. And then the reds are ones that I definitely don't want the client to see. So I usually create a, a smart album for those and then one that doesn't include either one. So I have basically the remaining images. So this I'm going to set to all this is the green, so I'll do all selects and then I'll create one more for all rejects. So that's the red. And then I will create one more that's essentially all remaining. In this case, I want to do is not red and then one more criteria color tag is not green and also make sure that match all is selected not match any you want both of these to be true for the photos that are that appear in this smart album so basically it's going to be any image that's selected in any of these uh, favorites that is not red and is not green so that's all the things I do when I'm setting up a custom template. The last thing to do now is to uh, save as a template. And you just need to give this a template name. I would call this Capture One 20 Tutorial Template and save that. And that's it. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how I use this template to create a session and then customize the Capture One interface so that the tools that I use the most during tethering are configured onto one tab. So I don't have to keep switching back and forth the tabs to check different things. Uh, and also reduce the number of tools that we need uh, so that there's just not lots of extra things there to worry about. That's it for now, and I will see you in the next one.